Daily Breath Sunday August 9 2020 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time Daily Breath Sunday August 9 2020 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew Immediately, Jesus obliged his disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowd away. And having sent the people away, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. At nightfall, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat was very far from land, dangerously rocked by the waves, for the wind was against it. At daybreak, Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. When they saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, thinking that it was a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But at once, Jesus said to them, Courage, don't be afraid. It's me. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said to him, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water to go to Jesus. But seeing the strong wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately stretched out his hand and took hold of him, saying, Man of little faith, why did you doubt? As he got into the boat, the wind dropped. Then those in the boat bowed down before Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. May you continue to be open to God's self-revelation to you, and may it empower you to share with others your faith relationship with God. The Lord Jesus desires that we know God. That is the reason that Jesus came among us, to reveal who His Abba Father is, and to help us to develop an ever-deepening relationship with God. The problem is that we often try to make God fit into our understanding and make God into our image rather than try to form ourselves into the image of God as God intends us to be. It is important for us to take the time to know God. It requires that We reflect on God's Word, both in Scripture and in the person of Jesus. As we continue the process of being aware of God's loving presence with us, we must be willing to share that experience with others and invite them to follow the Lord Jesus as He reveals Himself. His Abba and the Holy Spirit to us and them. Today, we are reminded of God's omnipresence, being everywhere. In the first reading, Elijah is told that he will experience the presence of God. Three mighty forces come upon Elijah, but It is not revealed in them. Yet, God does come to Elijah in an unexpected way. Our some response today repeats the phrase, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. In the second reading, St. Paul is saddened that his people, the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Jews, have not recognized the presence of God in their midst in the teaching and person of Jesus. 
in the gospel, Jesus makes his presence known to the apostles as they are being tossed about in a boat on a stormy sea. In the first reading, Elijah is promised a view of the Lord as the Lord passed by his cave on mountain Horeb. Elijah is expecting some powerful manifestation of God's presence, as was done for Moses on this same mountain. The mountain is struck by hurricane force winds, but God was not revealed. A portent at work hits and the mountain shakes, but God is not in this earth shaking event. Fire, lightning strikes the mountain, but again, God is not present in the fire. Finally, a gentle breeze whispers past the cave and Elijah experiences the presence of God in the gentle breeze. If today's gospel sounds familiar to some of you, it is. It is the reading used in the reflection five days ago, Tuesday of the 18th week in ordinary time. Jesus today reveals his presence with his disciples as they are being battered about by the winds and waves during the horrific storm on the Sea of Galileo. They find it hard to accept that Jesus would come to them during the midst of such a violent storm. When they first become aware of Jesus, they, can, they think they are hallucinating. Even after Jesus reassures them that it is He, they doubt. Presumptuous Peter challenges Jesus by saying, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus beckons Peter forth. For a while, Peter does find walking on the stormy sea. Yet, as he loses his focus on Jesus and looks at the stormy waters, he starts to sink. Jesus tries him for his lack of faith and fear to accept the presence of God with him. Once they are all safely back into the boat, the stormy subsides. I wonder how many times I have missed experiencing the presence of God. I know that God is omnipresent, presence everywhere. But I'm sure that there have been times when I was expecting God to manifest the divine presence in one way, as Elijah was expecting in the first reading, and I missed out on the Lord's self-revelation in other, more subtitle ways. The challenge for me is to be open to God's being with me at all times. I must keep my eyes open and expect the unexpected. What prevents some people, including myself, from being aware of God's revealing presence in their own myoptic sight? They can only see what they want to see and do not look around for God's self-revelation. Their own conception of God limits the awareness of God touching their lives. They want God to perform at their command and act in the way we fix into their idea of how God should act. They want God to be on their side and not on 
anyone outside. So when God makes the divine presence known in the ways which they have, which they do not expect, they missed see God acting in their midst. God is truly always present, wanting to make the divine presence, the divine essence known to us. Yet, we limit our own experience of God by focusing on the wrong events. God wants to be known to be the quiet, whispering priest as much as in the mighty forces that strike our lives. God wants us to take the time and smell the roses and experience the aroma of God, to open our eyes and see the beauty of God in creation, to be quiet and hear the heartbeat of God within us. God is revealing the divine presence in and through other people if we would take the time to get to know them and appreciate God's presence in them. That would lead to more peace and justice in the world. God wants us to experience the divine presence each day and every moment in our lives. If we do, we do live transformed lives living lives, lives which reflect God's presence within us. If we open ourselves to God's self-revelation, we would experience the salvation, wholeness, relationship with God, which God intends for us. We need to keep on praying with the same response today. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. For in an experiencing God's presence, we are thrown every more into the saving relationship with the Lord Jesus, his Abba Father, and the Holy Spirit. The personal question or action for today. When have I experienced the presence of God in an unexpected way. How was it unexpected way? How have I been asked to step, step out in faith? Was I able to keep my focus on the Lord or was I distracted by the events around me or about centering too much on myself? How can I help others who are being tossed about in the storms of life to be the assured of God's presence in them. Blessed are you, Lord God, omnipresent in every situation and in all places. Through your goodness, you with us to draw closer into relationship with you. You want us to know you in our everyday lives. You have revealed yourself from the first moments of creation to this very instant. You have shown yourself in majesty and power and in the whisper of a quiet pleas. You are so close to us as our oh, very breathing in and out. Yet we have failed to see you because we have close to our eyes and ears to you. We have tried to make you into the image we want to have with you. There and let you reveal who you are and not to us. You have given us the greatest manifestation of yourself in the presence of Jesus, your Son, who is lived among us. We give you thanks and praise as we reveal in your revelation. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord, your self-revelation in human flesh, who have, who have totally of himself, so that we might experience your presence with us. 
It is he who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, one God and only God forever and ever. Amen. Oh